What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. This past week was a pretty surprising one since we did not expect to get the RC build of iOS 15.5 and all of the other software updates so late in the week, but we did. So we're going to talk about that. And we're also going to talk about some huge iPhone news that I did not expect to hear some more iPhone 14 leaks, the good side of AirTags, and more. All right, so let's start by talking about the software side of things like we always do. So like I mentioned, Apple did release iOS 15.5 RC, or release candidate, to both developers and to public beta testers on Thursday. So it came late in the week. We were expecting a beta 5, but we got the RC bill, which I am definitely happy about. So we did get one new thing in the release notes here. So we did, of course, this is the final build. So we did get to see the final release notes for 15.5. And one of the features in there that was not in any of the betas is this podcast feature. So if you go to a podcast page and then go to settings and then down to automatically download, this right here is new in 15.5. So this feature is going to allow you to download and keep a select number of episodes or at a time interval, and then it's going to delete all of the other ones that do not meet this criteria right here. So like, for example, if I just wanted to have all of the you know last seven days episodes and delete the rest, you can see right here, it prompts you to remove 10 downloads because it can already tell that there are other episodes downloaded that do not fall within that seven day criteria. So this will be nice to reduce some storage that the podcast app takes up and it's going to help you kind of organize better as well. The RC build of iPad OS 15.5 and Mac OS 12.4 also showed us that universal control is now out of beta. So it was still in beta, of course, throughout the beta stages of this latest software release. But now in the RC build, we see it is no longer in beta. So things should run a little bit better than they were before. And then of course, I'm going to go over all of the features and changes, both big and small in my actual 15.5 what's new video, which is coming next week week. So stay tuned for that. I'm not going to talk about everything because I want to save it for that video and just not be repetitive here on the channel. Now, also this week, we did see a new firmware update for the AirPods Pro, AirPods Max, and for the AirPods 2 and 3. So this new firmware update is version 4E71. And this is the first firmware update for the AirPods Pro and Max since December. So of course, Apple does not release any type of change log or release notes, and I haven't noticed any changes with this version, which is why I didn't post a video here on the channel earlier in the week. But if you've noticed anything new in this new firmware update, let me know in a comment down below. But I've been using it on my AirPods Max, my AirPods Pro, and my AirPods 3, and I've not noticed any difference. Nothing has changed, nothing got worse or better, but I did just want to let you guys know a new firmware has been pushed out. Also, the AirTags update version 1.0.391 has finally been pushed out to all air tags so it was a really slow update it got pushed out slowly to air tags across the world but now it's out to all air tags and it should help with those phantom alerts that was an issue recently and also it should improve the sound it should be a little bit louder now when you're trying to find an air tag that's potentially tracking you or stalking you and then there was another very minor change found in the code related to focus modes and ios 16 but it wasn't really anything very noteworthy but you can see right here this is also changed in the rc build of 15.5 now as far as the release notes go again i was really surprised to see the release notes for the rc build because they were still pretty much unchanged since really beta 3 or even ios 15.4 i mean the change log the release notes pretty much looks identical. The only thing you'll see different is of course, this about this update page right here on your phone. But if you go to the actual, you know, developer portal and look at the release notes, it looks eerily similar to iOS 15.4. There's a lot of things in the 15.5 release notes that are not new in 15.5, like the adaptive triggers for the PS5 controller, you know, a lot of different features, the share play showing up, like those features are not new in 15.5. They were there in 15.4 and 15.4.1, but for whatever reason, they're still showing up and the release notes for 15.5. So I found that pretty curious. And then as far as the performance goes, performance has actually been a little bit better here on the RC build. And I don't know if this is just me, maybe I've been using it a little bit more than normal or what, but the RC build actually seems better than any of the betas for me in terms of performance. And I don't think it's a big jump, but it just seems to be quicker and more responsive to pretty much everything I do. So this could be placebo. And like I said, I could just be using the device more now because I'm really testing it out, but it seems a little bit better in terms of just overall performance and especially related to AirPlay. I just did a video where I used AirPlay a lot and it seemed faster 
than it was on 15.4.1. Now, as far as battery life goes, battery life is not any change from the previous betas. So it's been really good ever since beta three. So beta three, beta four, now the RC build. Battery life has been great. I think it's about the same as 15.4.1. It could be even a little bit better in certain scenarios for certain devices, but overall, really no complaints with battery life whatsoever. All right, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next week, we're gonna see iOS 15.5, the final public release. So that should come out early in the week, but of course it's Apple, you never know. They could even release an RC2 for all we know, but we should see the final version next week. And after that, I would not be surprised to see a 15.6 beta one start getting pushed out to developers. So Apple could wait a little while before pushing that out, but I just wanna throw it out there as a possibility of seeing next week as well. We could also see a 15.5.1 before we see a 15.6. Of course, it's really hard to tell right now, this is just speculation, but we could see a 15.5.1 at some point in June, most likely, maybe even the end of May or beginning to middle of June. And of course, speaking of June, on June 6th there, the first Monday of June is when we will see iOS 16 beta one. I am extremely hyped for this. I know you guys are as well. I will be live streaming. It's going to be a lot of fun here on the channel. I cannot wait for that. But of course, we're still going to have iOS 15 updates throughout the year, all the way until the fall until iOS 16 gets pushed out, you know, to the public. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. So let's start off with easily the biggest news of this past week, and that is that USB-C might actually be coming to the next iPhone. Not this year's iPhone, but the 2023 iPhone at the earliest. So this was first brought to light by Ming-Chi Kuo, who tweeted this out. My latest survey indicates that the 2023 iPhone will abandon the lightning port and switch to a USB-C port. USB-C could improve the iPhone's transfer and charging speeds and hardware designs, but the final spec details still depend on iOS support. It's expected to see existing USB-C related suppliers of Apple's ecosystem become the market's focus in the next one or two years, thanks to vast orders from iPhones and accessories adoption of USB-C ports. And the day after Quo tweeted this out, Bloomberg corroborated this rumor by saying this, Apple is testing future iPhone models that replace the current lightning charging port with the more prevalent USB-C connector, according to people with knowledge of the situation, a move that could help the company conform with looming European regulations. And then they continued by saying, if the company proceeds with the change, it would not occur until 2023 at the earliest. Apple is planning to retain the lightning connector for this year's new models. So this is super interesting. And I honestly was starting to lose hope that this would ever happen, let alone as early as next year. So I think this switch, you know, I think it's going to cost Apple a lot of money since they're going to be losing out on a ton of high margin you know, revenue with their proprietary lightning cords and adapters, dongles, all of that, but it will be a win for the consumer for us. So what do you guys think about this? Are you excited for USB-C? Do you want Apple to stick with lightning? Let me know your thoughts down there in those comments. I'm really curious how you guys take this. And that was not the only prediction that Ming-Chi Kuo made this week. He also recently said this, Apple will launch a new version of Apple TV that improves cost structure in the second half of 2022. I think that Apple's aggressive strategy of integrating hardware, content, and service amid the recession will help close the gap with its competitors. So I take this as Apple potentially releasing more of a like Roku stick or Chromecast competitor versus a full-blown Apple TV box, which I think is a tremendous idea. I don't know if this is what Apple was planning on doing, but I think a stick makes a lot more sense than a full like box. So the tvOS, you know, the UI of the Apple TV and tvOS is like 10 times better than the competitors. So there's definitely a gap in the market for this, as long as it's a reasonable price, maybe like, you know, 70 bucks or 60 bucks or something like that. So that's exciting. And I've not been excited for an Apple TV and like maybe ever. So I'm looking forward to see what Apple plans to do with this later this year. And I really hope that they go the stick route. Now, moving on to some iPhone 14 news, Ross Young is reporting that some of the iPhone 14 models will see display increases over the iPhone 13 series. So we can expect the iPhone 14 Pro to go from 6.06 to 6.12 inches and the iPhone 14 Pro Max to go from 6.68 to 6.69 inches and these are diagonal dimensions by the way so young also says that the change in screen size is due to the new pill notch 
and slimmer bezels. So they're still gonna be considered 6.1 inch and 6.7 inch displays by Apple, but these are the type of things that get me excited for this iPhone 14, especially those Pro models. And then Young followed that tweet up with this one where he shows Apple's alleged roadmap for the iPhone over the next few years. And in this, we can see that next year, we're gonna be seeing all iPhones get that pill and hole punch design, not just the Pro models. And then we can see the under panel face ID is on track for 2024 at the moment, which is pretty interesting. And you can see as it goes on through the years. We also just got another report that reconfirms what we've been hearing for the past six months. And that is the AirPods Pro 2 are coming later this year. So this report came from Mark Gurman, who also said that new colors of the AirPods Max are expected later this year, and hopefully with a price drop from $550. So new AirPods Pro 2, new AirPods Max colors. And then remember how Apple discontinued the iPod Touch earlier this week? I did make a video on this where I unboxed a brand new one, but the interesting thing about this is that Apple is now completely sold out of the iPod Touch seventh generation from 2019. So all colors and all configurations are wiped out in just like two days. So this surprised me since I didn't think we would see, you know, this inventory only last two days. I thought it would last like, you know, a week or maybe a month at the most, but it's pretty interesting to see this. I think most people are just either buying them to resell or just to have as kind of like a keepsake because the device is kind of irrelevant, honestly, here in 2022. So that was pretty interesting to me. So if you have a Tesla, you know the struggle of not having Apple CarPlay, but if you ever wanted it on that infotainment screen, now you can, kind of. So a developer recently released Tesla Android, which is a clever workaround for getting Android Auto or Apple CarPlay running on the Tesla by using a couple of Raspberry Pi devices. So it's not something I'm going to try, but it's super cool. And if you're interested in this, I will leave all the details down in the description below. And if you get it up and running, you know, DM me on Twitter or something like that. I would love to see one of my viewers actually doing this on their Tesla. And then finally, let's end things on a good note with a rare positive story about the AirTags. So an Australian photographer had almost $10,000 worth of camera gear and laptops and just various things stolen out of his car while parked in a hotel parking lot this past week. And doing as everyone who carries around expensive gear should do, he had an AirTag attached to both his camera and to his laptop. So once he realized what happened, he pulled up the Find My application on his iPhone and he was able to instantly locate those stolen items. And sure enough, the thieves were dumb enough to still be in the same hotel that that photographer was staying in. So subsequently, the police were called and I assume that that thief has been arrested. So let this be a reminder, if you have not done so already, get an AirTag or get three and attach them to any expensive item that you own that you plan on taking out in public or traveling with. I have AirTags everywhere in my suitcase, my camera bag, my laptop case, pretty much everywhere. And it is well worth it for that peace of mind. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is the latest batch of Apple news from this past week. Pretty dry in terms of news, not really anything too crazy aside from that USB-C story, but still hope you guys did enjoy that batch of news. And of course, some additional information on 15.5, the RC build. And I'm pretty excited to see the final release next week and maybe even a 15.6 beta one, we'll see. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one. And of course, some iOS 16 coverage coming up very soon as well. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.